keep in mind the Medicare Part B premium is also adjusted each year. So if you find yourself in a situation that you're going over this, there are different things that you can do to possibly lower this. One is that you can keep an eye on your income throughout the year, and maybe you can defer income such as money that you're maybe not using. You could invest it in something that doesn't generate as much income, maybe using an annuity to defer some income. Another option is that if you have earned income, if you're still working and collecting Medicare or uh, enrolled in Medicare, I should say, then maybe you could increase what you're putting into a retirement account, maybe increase what you're putting into a 401k. Maybe you could put money into an IRA or a health savings account. These are all ways that you could lower your income because once you go $1 over that, then now you're paying this penalty. Are you ready for a successful retirement? We're addressing the topics facing today's retirees. Welcome to Retire with Ryan. Now here's your host, Ryan Morrissey. Welcome back. I've been getting some questions lately about Medicare costs, and I thought it would be a good time to talk about what Medicare will cost you in retirement and how to avoid paying too much for your Medicare premiums in retirement. So you may be aware that Medicare consists of a couple parts once you're eligible, Part A and Part B. Part A is free as long as you've had 10 years of work history or your spouse has had 10 years of work history. But part B, everyone pays for. And if you're collecting social security, railroad, retirement pension, or an office of personal management pension, then your Medicare part B premium is automatically deducted from this monthly payment each time you receive it. If you're not receiving one of these, then you will receive a bill from Medicare for your part B premium each month. And for 2021, that Part B premium begins at 148.50 per month. So everyone pays 148.50. Where the increase could be is that if your income is over a certain limit, then you might pay an additional amount for that Part B premium. It's called an income related monthly adjustment amount or otherwise known as IRMA. And these limits are set each year. And once you go $1 over the limit, then you have to pay an additional amount. And there's a few different thresholds that are out there. So for a single filer, it begins at $88,000 for 2021. And for a joint filer, the threshold is $176,000. And that is that number that Medicare uses is your modified adjusted gross income. Your adjusted gross income is different than your modified adjusted gross income in that For your modified adjusted gross income, you add back to your adjusted gross income any tax-free income that you received, income from tax-free bonds. So you want to be careful that you're not going over this amount because once you go $1 over for a single filer, if you went over $88,000, then you'd pay $207.90. So you'd pay an additional $59.40 per month per individual by going over this modified adjusted gross income limit. And then the next bracket starts at 111,000. And once you go $1 over that, then you pay $297 a month. The next bracket then starts at $138,000. Once you go $1 over that, you pay $386 a month. And it keeps going up all the way to the highest bracket is if you have individual income of more than half a million dollars in one year, you pay $504.90. So that's a lot more than the 148.50. As a married couple filing jointly, you go over 176, it's 207.90. If you go over 222,000, then it's $297 per month. And all the way up to 504.90 if you're over $750,000. I'll put a link to the chart on the medicare.gov website where you can see the different modified adjusted gross income amounts and the Medicare Part B premium that you would pay based on those amounts. And keep in mind, the Medicare Part B premium is also adjusted each year. So if you find yourself in a situation that you're going over this, 
there are different things that you can do to possibly lower this. One is that you can keep an eye on your income throughout the year, and maybe you can defer income, such as money that you're maybe not using. You could invest it in something that doesn't generate as much income, maybe using an annuity to defer some income. Another option is that if you have earned income, if you're still working and collecting Medicare or uh, enrolled in Medicare, I should say, then maybe you could increase what you're putting into a retirement account, maybe increase what you're putting into a 401k. Maybe you could put money into an IRA or a health savings account. These are all ways that you could lower your income because once you go $1 over that, then now you're paying this penalty. Now, the other thing to note is that this is based on your most recently filed tax return. And so for the Medicare amounts for 2021, the Medicare administration based this off of your 2019 tax return because your 2020 return wasn't ready yet. So essentially it's your return from two years prior. So your income in 2020 will affect your Medicare Part B premium in 2022 and your income in 2021 will affect your Medicare Part B premium in 2023 and, and so on. So you get the picture. So you still have time for your 2020 return if you're over these numbers to possibly defer some income before you file your tax return. If you already are already 65 or if you're going to be turning 65 in 2022, so you really need to think a couple years ahead of when you're collecting. So every November, Medicare will mail you out what your rate is going to be for the upcoming year, and that is based on your most recently filed tax return, essentially one year before. So if you aren't able to lower your income by using deductions or deferring income, then you might just have to bite the bullet and end up paying that additional amount. It's probably a good thing if you're in that situation that your income is pretty high in retirement. And because this is recalculated every year, there could be a large capital gain one year, or if you're doing Roth conversions, a large Roth conversion that might trigger IRMA. But if the following year this didn't occur and your income fell below the limits, then the additional amount that you're paying would go away. It's a little hard to know what the amounts will be for next year because the current rates are possibly increased for the following year based on changes in what's known as CPIU, which is the Consumer Price Index for Urban Consumers. And last year, the Consumer Price Index U increased by 1.4%. So if you were to compare the modified adjusted gross income limits for 2019 versus 2018 tax returns, for a single filer, it increased from 87000 modified adjusted gross income to 88,000. And for a married couple filing jointly, it went from 174,000 modified adjusted gross income to 176,000. So point being, there wasn't a very large increase. So as you're planning out your 2021 income, I would use the 2019 numbers to think about as far as trying to stay under that limit and how it will affect your Medicare premium for a few years down the road. Now, you do have the ability to appeal your increase if certain situations have occurred. And this is really normally for generally probably if you're working right up until the point where you enroll in Medicare, your income is higher, and that would then maybe subject you to this additional Part B premium. And you have the ability to appeal your assessment as a result of eight different reasons. And those reasons are eight life-changing events, as they call them. One is if there was a marriage, another was divorce, another is death of a spouse, work stoppage, work reduction, loss of income-producing property, loss of pension income, and employer settlement payment. And if your life-changing event is not on the list, then it's not grounds for appeal. And you would fill out some paperwork, you'd fill out a form SSA 44. And on that form, it would ask you some information as far as what was the life triggering event and then the documents that you would need to provide for that. So if let's just say you retired or you went on Medicare beginning in 2021 and you're subject to this income-related adjustment and 
you were working this past year, well, you could use the work stoppage reason as an appeal to possibly lower what you're paying. So to fill out the form, if you were using work stoppage as your excuse, step one, you check work stoppage, you'd give the date, and if both you and your spouse were subject to this increase in Medicare premium, then you'd each have to fill out one of these forms. Step two on the form, you'd specify the tax year that your income was reduced by this life-changing event. So it would be in 2020 and also in 2021. And next, it would ask you if your modified adjusted gross income is going to be lower in the following year. So in our example, in 2021, yes, if you're no longer working, your income is going to be lower. And then it's going to ask for documents and you could supply a signed statement from your employer, copies of pay stubs, documents that show a transfer in a business or retirement. And in absence of proof, they will accept a signed statement from you under penalty of perjury that you stopped working or you sold your business. And you would then put the income estimates on there. And then the Social Security Administration will follow up with by checking your tax returns to verify that this was correct. So as long as that all went through, then you'd qualify for this reduction and it would help you in the current year. And as long as you don't go back to work or your income going above the modified address of gross income limits, then you shouldn't have to worry about IRMA in the future. I should also note that on the form, it does say that you can call in and discuss this over the phone or you could set up an appointment in one of the social security offices, though I'm not sure as I'm recording this, COVID is still going on if that is available at the present moment. But the form is relatively straightforward. It also lists out on the form what the additional life-changing events are and what the documentation is that would be needed if you qualify. For example, if your life-changing event was a marriage, then you'd need an original marriage certificate. If it was a divorce or an annulment, then you need a certified copy of your divorce decree or annulment. If it's due to death of your spouse, you need a certified copy of a death certificate. It's a work stoppage, as we talked about before, statement from your employer or signed statement from you. If it was a loss of income producing property, you need an original copy of an insurance adjuster statement of loss or letter from the state or federal government about the uncompensated loss. And if the loss was due to investment fraud or theft, then they require proof of conviction for the theft, such as court documents citing theft or fraud relating to your spouse's loss. If it's due to loss of a pension, You need a letter or statement from your pension fund administrator explains the reduction or termination of your benefits. And if it was a result of an employer settlement payment, a letter from your employer stating the settlement terms of the bankruptcy court and how it affects you or your spouse. So pretty clearly states what needs to be done there. I should also mention too that we were talking about Part B premium increases due to IRMA, but this also could apply to Part D If you happen to be using a prescription drug plan, then there are also additional increases for that as well. And the same thresholds that I mentioned before, above $88,000 as a single filer or $176,000 as a married couple filing jointly, then you'll be paying an additional $12 a month and up to a maximum of $77 additional month that you'll be paying. And as I mentioned before, this is per person. So this does start to add up if both you and your spouse are on Medicare and you're paying these additional amounts, then this can take a bite out of your income. So wherever possible, you want to strategize about where your income is coming from, maybe taking certain amounts from accounts from one year to the next to stay underneath this limit wherever possible. Or if it does make sense to maybe take the hit for one or two years possibly doing a Roth conversion to save on taxes in the future. So I hope you found this beneficial on avoiding paying too much or extra on your Medicare premiums. And if you don't have a plan for retirement or you feel your plan is in need of an update, then you should attend one of my online retirement readiness workshops. They're beginning February 25th. There's a few different dates and times to choose from. If you go to my website, retirewithryan.com, You'll see a pop-up there that shows the dates of the classes, or you can go 
to the homepage and you can click on retirement workshops to find out from there the dates and times. And they are webinars, so you can attend from the comfort of your home. I also would like listener questions. If there are things that come up that you have questions about, I'll take those and in the future, I'll start addressing listener questions. And by going to the same website, retirewithryan.com, you'll see a contact button. And right on there, you can put your name, email address, and phone number if necessary. But you can put what your question is, and I'll do my best to address that question in future episodes. Have a great week, and I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Take care. You should consult a financial advisor familiar with your specific circumstances before you make any financial decisions. Nothing in this broadcast constitutes a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mention of rates of return are historical or hypothetical in nature and are not a guarantee of future returns. Ryan Morrissey, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Morrissey Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. 